So uh, we're on the way to uh, see these uh, cold drift mine remains uh, that are down in this deep gorge. It's the only way you can do get to them is to walk about a mile in or so. So that's what we're doing. Mr. Box is way up there on point. And uh, these are, these drift mines, see, they go back to about 1910. And uh, the remains of a uh, rail line that ran all the way down through this deep ravine. Uh, some of the trussle remains are still there. So we're just gonna see if we can, uh, you know, if we can locate the drift mines and definitely find the trussle remains, so. Okay, keep uh, pushing forward. Oh, we're getting there, man. Long walk down the gorge, man. Oh. Okay. Across that creek. Now we're getting near them. Okay, here's a. Uh, one of the first of the uh, drift mines we were checking out. It's hard to believe, man, it came all the way down here. But this is one of the drift mines right here. So, and we've got some more to check out down here. So, it takes a little bit of walking to get down here, man, that's for sure. So, okay, so. After we check this out, we're gonna head on, keep heading on it down around. Okay, this old tramway bed right here, right here. Now, this is one of the mines right here. I can see it's, it is severely, and I mean severely flooded. Wow. <clears throat> wow, I mean, that's a lot of sediment that's gone in there over the years. Whew. Well, I think Mr. Bots is up on the upper tramway bed. I'm gonna stick down here. But uh, anyway, this is just one of the series of mines we came looking for. Like, hey, it's open, you know, but that boy, that thing, there's so much sediment in there, you can't even crawl in there. You'd just be covered in mud. So, all right. We're gonna continue on down this way. Okay, Mr. Box, he, he's way out ahead of me. He found the mines we were looking for. Just gave me a call. But uh, let's just show you how radical the topography is in the landscape. Yeah, here looking for these things. It's pretty picturesque. You got this whole green swamp-like area down there. Now the rail line is way beyond that area over there. But uh, anyway, we're gonna be heading off. This is actually still on the tramway bed right here. So, uh, so I'm just gonna follow it on around down here meet up with Mr. Box should be just around the corner over here but uh, that just kind of tells you I mean, interesting interesting features man when you're out here hiking in the woods looking for these mines you know okay we'll head on around the corner okay so joined up Mr. Box, a big black mass over there. That's where we're gonna go to next, but this is one of the ones 
they're wanting to see right here. Well, this is supposed to go big time. If you get down on your stomach, though, it looks like it's hitting the dead ends. Okay. It almost looks like just a little padded almost. All right. All right, well, we'll yeah. check it out. Okay, so I jumped in that one. Didn't go anywhere. I'm very surprised. Map indicates this would be going a long way. But uh, this one across the way over here, uh, this is another super huge mine right here. And you say, man, we're, we're just out in the middle of nowhere. And that is probably one of the biggest drift mine openings we've seen. Let's see if I can zoom in on that thing. Yeah, that is big. Tell you, man, no way you're coming out here in the summertime, man. Winter time only. Huh? Bunch of thorns right there. Oh, okay. Well, let him cross around this, get over around those thorns. See what we can see right there. Yeah, a lot of water coming out of this thing. Very big one. I can't tell if it goes or if that's water. There's water. All right, that's a huge drift mine opening, man. Goes back to about 1910. This one does. So. All right, Let's see what uh, get up here and see what we can find in there. Okay, so I I was the one that sacrificed myself. <laughs> uh, went back in there. It's totally. It's it's not totally full of water but you'd have to be on your hands and knees and I'm soaking wet right now. So uh, this mine goes for an incredibly long ways, has multiple haulage ways, multiple headers, but you know, it's just the way it is. You can find them, but when you get here, are they flooded, are they caved in, you just don't know. But impressive, impressive drift mine opening. This is one of the biggest drift mine openings we've seen that's, you know, really it's still open, so. But all right, we will uh, take a break and we're gonna go find some, try to find some additional coal mines while we're down here. All the uh, water that's coming out of that drift mine back there, it's flowing in here to create this pond. Right here. That's pretty amazing. All that water from that mine has caused this. <laughs> That's some pretty green water. Anyway, we're going to be heading on around this way. Okay, we explored some old coal mines up there way up there man it's about a 960 foot ridge and uh 
since we were here, we wanted to come down and see this abandoned rail line right here. And you can see they just left the rails, trussles, everything in place. It runs for about nine miles. And this was primarily put on for the for the coal mines. So they never did uh, when they see serviced on this line, they never for some strange reason and they they never pulled up the uh, never pulled up the rails and they left all the trussles intact. And you see the rail line right there just runs all the way down. So we're gonna go check out a couple of the uh, wooden trussles that are still on this line. And just since we're already down here, you can see it's beautiful country out of the middle of nowhere. Everything's in place, man. Following the, following the railroad line here. And you can see how much, how much they had to cut in just to make this line, man, it's impressive. I think this line had eight trussles, maybe nine, if I'm not mistaken. Plus they had to build this berm all the way up, man. That's about 150 foot drop down there. The creek is way below. So all this is coal country, coal mines, coal drift mines all over there. If you're so inclined to go look for them. So anyway, we'll film a little bit more as we get down. So they were uh, hauling so much coal on this rail line that uh, the coal would just shake off the tops of the coal cars. I mean, coal is all over the ground here, all the way down the line. So, all right. See if we can get through that kudzu there, man. Never, you could never do this in the summertime. No way. Uh uh. Coming up to the first uh, trussle, not the first on the line, just the first in the area that we're at. So these are impressive wooden trussles, man. So. Nineteen thirty one. What the date of the rail? Uh -huh. right. Look at that man, that kudzu is completely covered this thing. I'm gonna walk across it. Oh hell yeah. Looks like we can get pictures better from the other side. Anyway, this is one of the wooden trussels in the area that we're at. I mean it's impressive. Big wide creek. There's coal drift mines all back in these ravines. So but you can see how much rough country this is. This will just kill you. So, all right. I think he's checking the date of the rails, TCI rails here. All right. Okay, Mr. Box, I did away with some of the dead kudzu. And you can see it's a Tennessee, OH Tennessee. Uh, looks like maybe 10025RE-2-193. So, but anyway, these were made at the uh, Inslee plant in Birmingham, all these rails. Okay.
Okay, Mr. Box, he's gonna head on across that trussle. And what I'm gonna do, since I'm already heading down here, I've got boots on. I'm gonna cross the uh, I'm gonna cross the creek down below. Come up there on the other side. So it's an impressive wooden trestle. So I'll film some more as I get down. Yeah, there's some big gaps in there, man. I hope he's okay. Get across this creek. You can uh, see the uh, stones right there that they had to ballast the uh, trussle right there, put some cribbing in. That's kind of amazing that uh, wooden cribbing above the uh, stonework. And that, you can maybe see it through the water. Those are stacked up cross ties. So, it's still solid. I mean, that's a lot of wood, man. So, I mean, this thing was built, the line opened up around 1920, so. Anyway, I'm uh, going make it on across to the other side over there and get on up. Mr. Box is way up there. He just scared a whole family of raccoons. 
These raccoons just came from the top of the trussel and came down there hiding out somewhere over there. So, all right. Okay, just came through the creek up the other side of the embankment. Mr. Box is still trying to cross this trestle. Oh, that's a climb, man. Those things are broken, broken away. That's why I decided not to do that. <laughs> right there. All right, man, you're getting there. Watch out. Uh, some big, uh, some huge gaps right there, dude. Huge gaps right here, too. Yeah, so. All right. Well, after we finish having fun here, we're gonna be heading on down the rail line to the next trestle uh, before we go ahead and call it a day. I come back up out of here. Okay, so the other trussel is back this way. You got the rail line here. You got a big pile of old cross ties right there. And we got the next trestle. We're gonna, or he's probably gonna cross. And then we'll go ahead and get on up out of here. Hard to imagine, 100 years ago, man, steam locomotives coming down through this deep gorge right here, carrying the coal back. All right, let's see what this looks like. Okay, this is the bottom of the second trestle. One we're gonna see. So we get across this. There's an old tramway line we're gonna take to head on back. But uh, yeah, this isn't long to uh, still stand, man. It's pretty, pretty rotten. So uh, anyway, I'm, I get across here and get up to the other side. I mean, it's super rare to even see an abandoned trestle, much less with rails still on it. Yeah. Yeah. Put a lot of money and work into this. These things weren't cheap to build. So. Hi. Right. See if there's any more raccoons, Josh. Yeah, come here. Let me show you. Hi. I'll get up there in just a second. All right, this is the other end of the trestle, right here. It's 
So uh, we're gonna go ahead and conclude this. And we're gonna be taking this tramway line, get on up out of here. But this will keep going down to the next, next series of coal mines. Like I said, all back in these deep ravines in this deep gorge, uh, there's coal drift mines everywhere. But just to even go see a couple of them, it takes all day. It takes all your strength out of you too. So, all right, well, this is a good trip. Good to see this. All right, and we'll be heading on back out.